Hello there, and welcome back to the Claire Codes channel. Today, we are going to learn how to code up a well-designed Dribbble website. So here is the Confectionery Website Interactions by Tubic. And we will treat this as though we are a front-end developer who is given this Figma file of the design and must code it up. So this is a great simulation of a real-world job as I did this exact thing at my last company. So again, let's look this over. This is the interaction. And I'm using, um, I went on Dribbble and I searched website design. And again, this is confec Confectionery Website Interactions by Tubic. And I will put a link to this below in the show notes. And I liked this because it has the full page here. I did a screen recording of this so I could slow it down because there's a lot going on. We are going to be covering in this episode one when it goes back to the top, there's a lot of interactions, which is awesome, this top part. So that's what we're gonna try to get to. And yeah, Dribble is a great resource, so definitely check it out. Okay, so this is what the designers gave us, right? This is the Figma file. And as you can see, and this is a great website, Figma, you can design in it, which we are not going to be going over, but I can like edit this directly. And then you can share it. So you could share it with other developers. And that's what we are today. So let's zoom in and see the wonders of Figma. So as you can see, I can click on this and I can click here. This is a better example. And I can see exactly how far away it is from everything. So this is great for when you're trying to define margins. And then also I can see what color it is and I can copy the hex. I can see the font weight and it just clearly depicts everything that's going on. I can even go back to design and download this as an SVG, as any file I want. So it's a really great platform. Okay, so what are we going to be doing today? Our website, and many developers do this, it's mobile first. So we're going to be working first on 320 pixels, which is mobile. Then we're gonna move to adjust it for tablet and then adjust it for desktop. So those are the three sizes we care about. And it's good to, you know, be vigilant, like what's going on, what's different. So as you can see, like the text up here, the titles change a bit. Here it's kind of all in a line. Here we have this maybe center. These are left aligned. Once again, that's going on here. This image turns from opacity. Let's see. I think it's 20% um, opacity for this image. Correct. To, you know, 100% opacity. So... Those are just things to keep in mind as we go along. All right, so, and then also something important about this tutorial is we are going to be using HTML, but we are also going to be using SCSS. And this might seem a little complicated, but I think that this is, if this is more advanced than where you are, I think you can make this jump. If you know HTML and you know CSS, or even you're in the process of learning it, I think jumping to SCSS you know, it's very similar to CSS and we'll go over the differences. And, you know, HTML, still HTML. The only thing that's different about the way we are doing this is we're gonna have a package JSON and I'll go over this more later on and we're gonna have node modules. And the package JSON and the bundler allow us to host everything on localhost 3000. So as you can see, it's just lively, it's a live, a live hosting um, development localhost and as we update it will update too and again going over it further but because of this let's go over what we need to do this project so i'm going to be using visual studio code which i highly recommend i think that this would be the best way to keep up with this tutorial i'll put a link to download it if you do not have it it is free which is amazing and then the other important thing is in order to live host this and on your local host and also just stay up with this project it's important to have node downloaded so if you know that you don't have node definitely go ahead and i recommend doing the recommended for most users 12.19.0 and you can go I'll also put a link to nodejs.org and just you know go through the whole process you click here then it'll download and then you you know just as you download anything you go through all the steps Okay. Oh, and once another thing that's important, I have a GitHub uh, 
base and we'll actually be using this in a moment. But this is the GitHub base and so everything is here. This is the main branch. If you're unfamiliar with GitHub, um, I think it's, it's relatively straightforward and I'll be walking through the steps. But their branches are here and everything that we're going over today, if you want to see, is going to be located in Claire slash feature slash mobile. So if we go into the source folder, we can see exactly the H index HTML. So if you get stuck somewhere, you can always refer back to this. Okay, so let's get started. So this is the base. Um, I'm not going to be, oh, <laughs> I'm still in this branch. I wanna go back to main. This is the base. I'm not going to be starting this from scratch in this tutorial. We are going to be starting with the base, which I think is a good place to start. So right now, um, you can just download the zip that's probably the most straightforward way to do it. But I'm also going to show you just a way to do it in your terminal. So we're going to copy this link here. Let's go to our terminal. So I'm going to CD to my desktop. And then from here, uh, that's where I want to put this directory. I'm going to do git clone. Um, and this also, if you, I think downloading it might be the most straightforward if you don't have git already installed. So that's another thing to install. Again, I'll put links below. So git clone, and then boom, GitHub, the link, and it's cloned to my desktop. And now because I'm running Visual Studio Code, I can CD, let's see, what is this called? Dribble, <laughs> I love how it has three Bs, and then tab, and it'll fill. So now I'm in the directory, and I'm gonna do code dot, and it will open up, perfect. All right, so let's see what we have here. We have our source folder, which is where the magic is going to happen. That's where we are editing our HTML, our SCSS, and we have some JavaScript. I don't know if we'll get to JavaScript in this tutorial, but we might for the video if we wanted to autoplay, but we're really just gonna be focusing on HTML and then styling and SCSS. So as you can see, we just have a base. That's all that's going on here. And then we have our SCSS which is connected by, this is the reason we have index.js, is to connect and import the SCSS so that it's connected to the index. So as you can see in our index, we're importing, there, yeah, our index HTML, too many indexes. We're importing the index.js, which is then importing the SCSS, the main one, which is then importing the base. And we'll go over kind of more once we get started with our SCSS, why this is necessary. Basically, we're going to have a base file. We're going And for each section, we'll break this down. So I'm thinking that this kind of will be the heading section. This can be like the main section. And then if we had a footer, we would, you know, put in a footer section. So I like the idea of having it broken into different sections and then having them all imported into one main, which makes it a lot easier in the index.js because then we just have, you know, to import one SCSS file as opposed to all of them. So that's what's going on there. We have our package JSON where we have our scripts. The scripts are important. As you can see, there's, you know, some stuff going on. I'm not gonna go over all of it, but really this is what it means is to, you know, take the um, index.html and everything that's going on. We have a parcel bundler, so it's going to bundle it and put it make a development directory that outputs to port 3000. And then if we want to build, this is the build is where we it actually would make it into HTML and it would bundle the uh, SCSS to make it CSS actually. And then if we were hosting this, that's all we would have to do is just take everything that's in the build folder. Um, I think it would turn into a dist folder, correct? Yes. And just we can just put that and host it online. And so, yeah, so the first thing we're going to do is we can do command tilde, or uh, yeah, uh, or up arrow tilde, uh, or you can just click right there. So terminal, new terminal. Let's actually increase the size of everything. Perfect. Okay. And then from here, what you're going to do is just npm install. Because right now, if you install node, you also have npm. And then it's going to take a little while. Not too long because we don't have too many dev dependencies. And once this all loads, we're going to have a node modules folder. And node modules is what enables us to do what we're going to do. All right. Perfect. And now we're up and running. So 
Let's start coding, shall we? Okay, so let's get started, shall we? So the first thing we are going to do, so let's look back at our Figma file. Remember, we're starting mobile first. Let's see what typefaces we need. So if I zoom in and I'm in inspect, I can see that I need Playfair display. And this is also a different typeface and it's open sans. So let's go grab those. So for open sans, I selected regular, semi bold, and bold. Okay, and then, so it says review, and you can see them all here. Then you go to embed, and it gives you the link. So you just grab the link, and we bring it here. We can close that into our index.html, and then below the title, let's just paste that in. So, and we can save that. And then let's go back. We also want Playfair, and we want this at regular and bold. So I'm just gonna grab that as well. Copy that, go back, and paste it in. All right, now we're also gonna start something different. I'll open this in the next window just by clicking that. So something that's cool about SCSS is we can define variables and we can reuse them. So I'm actually going to just put that there so I know what's going on. Not necessary, but it's a little comment. Okay, so our display font, and this is going to be our first variable. It, yeah, if I can spell display correctly. And let's see, so we wanna just grab what it is. So the display font is going to be Playfair. So you just copy that again, the font family. And I'm gonna put that right there. And then our body text is, you guessed it, going to be open sans. So we're just gonna copy it from here. and save. All right, let's get started. So let's go back to Figma. And this is exactly how I did it as a front end developer, how I, my workflow. So I go to Figma and see what's going on. So we're going to start with this logo at the top. So as you can see, it, has, it says Fondness Chocolate. That's the company. And then in smaller letters, it says Small Batch. So you know that those are the two things we got going on. So let's go up here. Just going to close this for now and below inside our body let's get started let's make our first div we're going to give this the class container so it's containing everything inside and let's make another div and this i'm going to give the class header because we were working on the top header of our website <clears throat> or the fondness chocolate website okay so now in the nested divs, I'm going to start each class with header and then two underscores. So we know that this is going to be our logo. And then within here, we are going to have our title and subtitle. So I'm going to make, since they're small for a logo, I'm going to make this an H4. And let's give this the class of header underscore underscore title. And then within here, let's put fondness chocolate and we're just going to do it lowercase like you know capitalized first letter because we can always do text transform uppercase and then below that I'm going to make this a what did I make that I made that an h4 let's just make this this is smaller so let's make it an h6 I think it's the smallest thing on the page and let's give this a class of header subtitle and within here this should say boop a doo small batch and yeah let's save that and let's actually get up and running so if we look at our package json we see that we have dev as one of our scripts so we are going to do right here npm run dev let's get up and starting so as you can see, it made a development folder and a cache, and now we're up on localhost. So we're gonna command click to run this. And I'm actually on localhost 49851 because I think localhost, I'm already using that, 3000. Okay, cool. So as we can see, you know, a little sad, but that's what we got going on. And then I'm actually going to right click and click inspect. And right now I have it so that it is in iPhone SE because that is 320 pixels. 
And this is what we're designing for to begin with. So let's actually put that side by side. Okay, and so then as we can see, we want this to be 47 pixels. And then I'm going to look down here and do, do, do here is good. 46 pixels on the side. So I'm just gonna say the designer meant this to be have a padding of 46 on both sides. And that's exactly how I would do it. Okay. So, and then also, you know what I'm gonna do next? I'm gonna grab all of these colors and make them all into different uh, variables. So I see that this color is AD7B7C. Let's see, I think this is the same. Then we have this color, and then we have this color. Okay, so for brevity's sake, I'm just gonna grab them from my previous file and paste them in. And then I also can see that the background color is FEF5F7. So here are all the colors, and they're all, I'm gonna put them all in base settings, and I'm just gonna save that. And let's go back here. Um, something that's also important, when you start any file, uh, as you can see in here, we already have some margins, and those are just built in. They come with H4s and h with any, you know, um, text. So we just want to get rid of all of that. Let's get rid of that. Okay, cool. And so we do that by selecting all, which is this asterisk, and then before and after is just good to, you're just covering all your bases. Margin zero, padding zero, and box sizing inherent. All right, and now let's get started. So let's, we know that we want all of the body, so the whole background, to have a background color of, you guessed it, background color. And let's save that. And then if we go back, we can see, it's maybe a little hard to see on the screen, but it is light pink. Should be. Let's just double check. doesn't quite look like it came in and it did okay so it's just the screen is just too bright for that but it's there okay cool now let's go let's leave out of this let's go back to our index and then I'm actually that's all we're gonna do in our base but I am going to copy all of this and I'm gonna make a new file so this is our SAS and let's call it header dot SCSS and then let's paste this in there and let's write header styling save that and then something that's important is whenever we do that we need to import it so let's copy that and instead we want to import header okay cool so let's go into our header.scss and now we already have the variables started and from there, we can start by selecting the header class or the eater class. <laughs> okay, and um, like I said, we know that we want the padding to be 48 pixels. I'm kind of rounding it. If this was like a real project, the designer, uh, it would go through QA, which is quality assurance, and they would double check everything is the same as the design. And the designer might be like, no, I did it 47 pixels for a reason but it's our project, so <laughs> this is what we're going with. Okay, so now let's select logo. And because this is SCSS, I'm nesting this within here. And the underscores allow me just to do an ampersand and then the class name. And this is really cool because it helps organize like what's going on. I know this is all nested here, so it's kind of cool that the SCSS, you can nest it as well. So um, I know from looking at this, we called beige AD7, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I can see that that's what this is. This is, And I also can see this is 14 pixels. It has a weight of 700. It's Playfair display. And it's a line center. So I get all of this just from Figma, which is really cool. I'm unfortunately, I'm not going to give the Figma file just because if I shared it and say this video like blows up, who knows, then everyone would just be up here and I don't have like a premium account and so I'm not sure how many people can actually like use it at once. Okay, so let's get started. So I know that I want the color to be beige. I want it to be text align center. 
Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, this is the whole um, the whole logo container, right? So I'm not right now moving on to the title or the subtitle, even though I just clicked in on the title. But I know that the whole, all of the text is beige. And then I also want to center it on the page. So I'm going to do margin zero auto. And then if I go back to it, actually, I can see that boop -a -doo, it has a width of 92 pixels. So I'm just going to give it that width. Okay, cool. And now I'm going to do the title. And let's give that the font family of display font. Got to remember that dollar sign. Make that dough. I know that the font size is seven, sorry, 14 <laughs> pixels, jumping ahead. And we want to, of course, text transform uppercase. And I know that this is the bolder weight. So it's going to be a font weight of 700. Let's save that and let's see what's going on. So as you can see, we already have the coloring and this is looking good. I like that. The logo is already coming into place. So that's the title. And now let's select the subtitle. And this is going to have a font family. All of the text that isn't titles is going to have a font family of body text. And this is going to actually be half the size. So it's going to be a font size of seven pixels. We are also transforming this uppercase. And as well, it has a font weight of 700. All right, cool. So that is our logo, just like that. We have it there. So now let's move on to this part, which I'm going to be calling the heading. So we have confectionery factory based established in 1965 and making has always been wound in mystery. And then as you can see, we also have this like um, image behind it, which is kind of an etching. And remember it's 20% there, but it's at 100% here and it kind of changes location. So we're gonna have to kind of mess around with its positioning for sure. Okay, while I'm here, before I forget, let's actually download this asset. So let's grab it. Let me zoom out so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to grab the most opaque one because I can always change the opacity. And it's harder to go the other direction. So we're going, we're, going, bleh, talking. we're going to go to design. Then we're going to choose SVG and export the frame. So it became frame and we can actually click on it and that looks correct. And then it came to my downloads folder. So if I drag this over here, there it is. There she blows. Now let's re let's go back here and inside source or SRC, I'm going to make a new directory and I'm going to call it IMG. And then within IMG, let's rename this to like flower SVG. Oh, that's already taken. Um, let's do leaves close enough. Okay. Oh yeah. Flowers down there. Okay. And then let's drag that right there. So we got it. And as you can see, this is what an SVG looks like. I'm glad we're not making it ourselves. Well, especially this SVG. This is a very complicated SVG. Okay, cool. So let's get out of that. So we still have header open. We can actually close this now that we have that there. And yeah, let's get started. Again, right now we're moving on to the heading, which is, let's zoom out again, go back to mobile. Mobile first, mobile first. Uh, let's see what's this one. 768, so that's tablet. Here we go. Okay, so let's get started with um, confectionery and then mystery section. So we're going to scroll down. Give me a second to catch my bearing. So we have, let's see where header logo closes. So we still want this to be within header. So I like putting a space to differentiate what's going on. So we want this div, and then I'm going to do class header heading, which I know is all really original. <laughs> and then within here, let's make our first text. So this is going to be H3 and this is going to be the, you know, the established little section. And I'm going to call this header oh, after I make a class, class header, again, really original heading dash subtitle. 
I'm not always the best at naming things, but that's how it is sometimes. And then within here, uh, let's call this our H1 because it is the largest text. And let's give this the class of header underscore underscore heading title. Cool. And so I'm actually going to just copy the text. I could copy it directly from Figma, but in Figma right now, it's all uppercase and just, you know, it's good convention to make it lowercase and then uppercase it in your CSS, SCSS, what have you. And I'm going to copy this as well because those are our two text sections and I'm just going to save. So if we look back, it's all going to be stacked like that, right? So let's start doing some styling and we want to select the heading. And I know that we are going to want to get heading, subtitle, and he heading he title. So let's just paste those below. Heading, subtitle, subtitle, heading, title. Okay, so let's look back at Figma. Let's say from here, let's inspect, here to here is about 91, so let's do um, a margin top of, it's round, 90 pixels. I like whole numbers more. And then let's get started. So the font family here is going to be the body text. And then I also want to text transform uppercase. Let's actually grab what's going on here. And this is the subtitle, yeah. Okay, great. So I want it definitely need to be uppercase. I also know I want it to be 14 pixels. If we looked back at Figma, we would see that. But I want a lighter font weight. And then I also want a different color. So I'm going to make this color beige. It's the first time that's appearing. Okay, cool. Now let's move back. I know we want a bunch of these things, so I'm just gonna copy this over. And if you want, we can, let's just look back. So this title is going to, you know, repeat a bunch, but it's probably going to be actually located in different SCSS files. So it's okay that we don't have a repeating class name. So I want it to be Playfair. I want it to be 400 normal style, which is fine. We don't need to delineate that three and 36 pixels. And then, you know, if we were getting really specific, maybe we would also put line height, but I'm okay with not doing that. And then I see that there's a 20 pixel um, margin top. All right. So we don't want this to be body text. We want it to be display. And then I'm just going to put it right here, margin top of 20 pixels. Um, the font size is definitely going to be bigger than this. Let's give that 46. I love that everything is uppercase on this page. Font weight 400 is great. And we actually want, ooh, let's close that. We want the font color to be red this time. And remember, we have all the font variables defined up here. So that's where it's grabbing them from. And let's save all that. And let's see what's going on. Okay, cool. I'm liking it so far. That looks good. And yeah, now we definitely want our image. So before below the H1, I'm going to make another div and give it class header image container. And then within here, let's put our actual image. So IMG. And I know that I want this to be self-closing. The source of it is going to be dot slash IMG leaves. And then let's give it an alt. So this is like for a screen reader. And let's do flower engraving. Good to be specific. Cool. And then do we give it a class name? No. Let's give it a class name of header image this time. Let's save that. So I know that I want this to be both located behind and to not really move around. So when I select image container, you can also just do it this way as a shortcut to copy it. I want it to have a position of absolute. And then I want it to be moved down from the top 300 pixels. And let's give it a right of 20 pixels. And remember, we know from Figma the opacity, we want it to be 20%. And let's do, let's see what that looks like actually. 
Okay, cool. So it's already here, but as you can see, it's kind of uh, sitting on top and it also isn't, yeah, yeah, just for right now, let's just talk about that. So I don't want it to be sitting on top. So Z index is the positioning of the items like behind or in front. So if we give it a negative one Z index, it's actually now behind there. So that's great. And then we called that other just and image. Yeah, okay, just double checking. And I want this to be a smaller width. So let's give this a width of like 60% or just the size smaller in general if I define width. And then as you can see, it's sitting, even though I gave it a right, it's sitting over here. So I'm actually going to text align end. Let's look back. Okay. I'm happy with that. Yeah, that looks really good. Did I make this? Yes, I was like, that looks off. All right, let's make that 36. That's what I meant to do. Okay, it's looking much better. Cool. Uh, so yeah, quality assurance would have been like, that is the wrong font size. So this is our header. This is what we're going to do. This is what we did in this episode. That's where we're going to stop. As you can see, it's looking good. And then next time we will you know, make this kind of body section. We'll add a button in, and then we will also add a video using an iframe. And we'll keep going from there. Maybe we'll get to this, and something that's really cool, so I go back to Dribble, we're gonna have a CSS animation when it loops back around, so we're gonna get to see this all again. Cool. So this is the top, what we did, the video is playing here. We have this little picture section, and then this kind of, as you can see, it has an animation goes pretty fast, but you can see it's there. So yeah, thank you for tuning into this part. I look forward to seeing you in part two. All right, have a great day. Bye. And I'm on the roll.